insightful podcasts by informative hosts. Insights into Things, a podcast network. Welcome to Insights into Teens, a podcast series exploring the issues and challenges of today's youth. Your hosts are Joseph and Madison Whalen, a father and daughter team making their way through the challenges of the teenage years. Welcome to Insights into Teens. This is episode 37, Diversity and Discrimination. I'm your host, Joseph Whalen, and my creative and artistic co-host, Madison Whalen. Hello. How are we doing today, Maddie? Pretty good. So we, uh, we're talking about a f- fairly serious topic this week. Yeah. Um, diversity and discrimination. Um, Unfortunately, there's a lot of discrimination in the world, but there's also a lot of diversity. So we're going to look at both sides of the coin. Uh, We'll talk about what diversity is. We'll talk about some types of um, of what discrimination is, obviously. But we'll talk about what some types of common discrimination are, what the negative impacts are. We'll look at some statistics, and we'll look at some ways to overcome discrimination. And then we'll finish up with your closing remarks and shout outs. Awesome. So ready to get into it? Yep. Here we go. So our definition this week comes from Teen Talk Canada, which we've used in the past. It describes diversity as referring to the ways that we are all different from one another Some differences can be our gender, sexuality, ethnicity, or culture, religion or spirituality, our family, how much uh, money we have, or our social standing, our age or body size, and abilities. Uh, We believe diversity, all things that make us different, should be appreciated and celebrated. Loving differences starts with being curious and open-minded when someone seems different from us. Um, that's diversity. Now the opposite side of the coin there is discrimination. Discrimination is when people treat others badly because they are different from them in some way. A form of discrimination called oppression is often used to take power away from an individual or a group of people. It can be hard if we experience discrimination, but there are supports and ways of resisting. Learn more about discrimination and supports and the ways of resistance, which is what we're going to try to address today. Okay. So, um, on a related note, the one thing I did want to talk about from my perspective on diversity is, as you know, I play an online game. And in that online game, I happen to run a very large community of people. Mm -hmm. And that community of people, which numbers well over 300 people at this point in time, are people from all over the world. We have people from Bangladesh, from Russia, from Europe, from Canada. I have someone, number of people from Australia, a number of people from the UK. And, you know, the majority of people are from the United States, but that's mainly because of the time zone difference. And the one thing that I can say just from the seven years or so that I've been involved in this group is that that diversity has been incredibly rewarding for me in a number of ways. One is it's educational. You know, I've learned so much about other people's cultures during this time period, and it's been a fantastic experience for me. Um, Unfortunately, in that same gamer community, there have been very controversial instances of discrimination as well, um, to the point of threatening violence to people. Um, There was an incident, and I don't want to get into the details too much here, but there was something called Gamergate that people can look up, 
um, that really came down. It was, it was more or less gender discrimination in games itself to the point of harassing people with violence. Um, and, and unfortunately, when something like that happens, we kind of all lose in that situation because there are advantages to the diversity side of things that if you're not smart enough to take advantage of it, you're losing out and you're forcing other people to lose out. So I just wanted to kind of convey that up front as a couple of really good examples of diversity and discrimination. Have you ever encountered uh, discrimination in school or have you seen people uh, encountering discrimination in school? Actually, yes. Um, it happened quite recently. I didn't um, witness it, but um, someone from my science class had um, told me that um, pe people were were being mean to them because, um, let's just say they're transgender, and like they were just being mean to them, annoying them, and just saying that they'll misuse their pronouns. Right, right. And, and I mean, if you really want to get down to it, that's really a form of bullying at that point. Mm -hmm. um, and we'll talk about the, you know, the types of discrimination that are out there. Um, and this, this falling under one of them. Um, but a lot of times discrimination is a product of people that are afraid of things that are different that they don't understand. Um, so there's a certain amount of sympathy, I think, that I feel towards people who are discriminatory because, one, they're obviously afraid of something, and two, they're just ignorant of the subject matter at that point in time. And I kind of feel bad for people who just aren't smart enough to learn. You know, mm -hmm. I mean, especially when you're given an opportunity with that level of diversity. Um, so let's get into uh, the common types of discrimination that we um, are going to talk about today. Okay. So the first thing we're going to talk about is probably the, the one that nowadays and for a very long time, uh, has gotten the most attention, and that is racism. Have you ever heard of racism? Mm -hmm. So racism is a belief in the superiority of one race over another. It may also include prejudice, dis discrimination, or antagonism directed against other people because they are of a different race or ethnicity or the belief that members of different races or ethnicities should be treated differently. Modern variants of racism are often based on social perceptions of biological differences between peoples. Um, and the definition goes on to a little bit more detail, but, but basically it's, it's discriminating against people of color, of, you know, um, Asian descent, Middle Eastern descent. Um, a lot of times in the public now, it's Caucasians who are, often the ones that are um, doing the discrimination. Um, you see a lot of mention of white supremacy in the news now. Um, white supremacy isn't something that's new, unfortunately. I mean, our country um, has a long history of white supremacy and discrimination. I mean, going back to colonial times, you know, when slavery was legal here, the our country has a very um, long and painful history of racial discrimination. Um, in the in the 1950s and 60s during the Cold War, it became an international incident um, because you had a lot of countries that were emerging from Africa, a lot of new countries that were forming um, after the breakup of the British Empire, and they were independent nations. And they were sending delegates to the United States because of the United Nations. And you had people from African nations who were political ambassadors and, and delegates who couldn't get housing in New York and New Jersey and other areas near the United Nations in New York because they were being racially discriminated against. Um, so it, it, it caused a lot of... That was really when the the nation's history of racial discrimination 
became a national embarrassment on an international stage. Now, do you see uh, racial discrimination in school, you know, kids against, you know, uh, black students or Asian students or anything along those lines? Mm, Not really. Occasionally, I would just hear people making jokes about them, but I didn't really, I wasn't able to, like, they weren't, like, attacking someone else with racism, but, like, I would um, sometimes hear jokes about it, but I know they didn't really mean it. I could tell they didn't really mean it because they were saying it in a joking manner, but it's really nothing to be joking about. Well, I agree. I mean, even when you're joking about it, it's still hurtful things to say. Um, And, you know, even when you're joking about it, there's an underlying current of racism there. Uh, I grew up in a predominantly white neighborhood, and going to school, there were very few non-whites in the school. Um, My, my, I think my sophomore year, junior year, uh, on the football team, we had um, this young African American male who was on the team, and I got along with him great. He was in a couple of my classes. He and I, you know. We didn't hang out so much after school because he didn't live close to me. But, you know, we were perfectly fine. But because he was the only black kid on the team, um, he was picked on mercilessly, um, which was which was really a shame. Um, And me being the type of person that I am, I was always the type of person who had a tendency of sticking up for anyone who was bullied, regardless of why you were bullied. Um, so I wound up getting into some altercations on his behalf, trying to defend him. Um, but, uh, you know, he, he, that was one of those things that he put up with and, and even that bad behavior was a significant improvement over what African Americans had to go through just to attend non-segregated schools because you figure back in the 50s and 60s you had segregation laws you know the first black students to attend a non what they called back then colored school because they separated all your services between white and colored which i thought was kind of stupid because yeah white's a color too so yeah like The the terminology they used. Yeah, and, like, you can't just call white not a color. It's still a color. Pretty much every, like, white is, like, the definition of a color. Right. So white light is all colors together. Yeah. Um, But back then, it was so controversial that the governor of the state actually called out National Guard to stop kids from going to school. Like, could you imagine... You know, you're a minority, technically, because you're Jewish. Mm -hmm. Could you imagine you going to school on the first day of school and the entire school being blockaded by residents of the town who didn't want you to go to school because of your religion and the president of the United States having to send in troops to escort you to your class? Could you imagine what that must be like? That just sounds stupid and just, like, why would that happen? And it was because of racial segregation and, and prejudice and discrimination. Then again, then again, our president is kind of... Well, we don't want to get into politics yeah, on like, this, but that was what it was like. And 30, 40 years later, almost 50 years later, it still was there. That undercurrent of um, of hate was still there, and it is today. And it's it's tragic that it... That it you know, people can still hate just because of the color of your skin. Yeah. So the next thing that we have, the next common type of discrimination we have is sexism. So sexism is prejudice or discrimination based on a person's sex or gender. Sexism can affect anyone, but it primarily affects women and girls. It's been linked to stereotypes and gender roles and may include the belief that one sex or gender is intrinsically superior to another. Extreme sexism may foster sexual harassment, rape, and other forms of sexual violence. Gender discrimination may encompass sexism and is discrimination toward people based on their gender identity, which is what your friend at school has experienced. Mm -hmm. Um, 
gender discrimination is especially defined in terms of workplace inequality. So you've seen, you know, based on what you've told us so far, you've seen sexism so far in this one particular instance. Mm -hmm. Have you seen it elsewhere where people have treated you differently because of you being a girl? Um, like in gym class, you know, something like that. No, I think it was just because I wasn't athletic and I was basically just a shy kid. Because, like, they would... But then again, I did notice some of the girls, like, they would always normally pick the boys first. And, right. like, some of the girls wouldn't get picked first. And that's a form of sexism. You know, the, if you take it beyond school, then... What you run into is things like um, a man and a woman getting paid different salaries to do the same job. I know. Like, um, I've had this example before. It's like the man and the woman work the same time. They have the same shift. They work at the same place. And they have the same job. But the man will be paid more than the woman will. And I just think that is kind of stupid. Right, and that's because, strictly because of gender. Yeah. Um, so again, it's it's being unfair. Uh, the military was guilty of this, just as the military was guilty of racism for the longest time, where they wouldn't allow women to serve in combat units. And they would make every excuse in the book for it, but you know, one of the reasons that they wouldn't allow infantry, women in, in frontline infantry, was because it was unsanitary and and because women had different sanitary needs than men. So you couldn't have women in the trenches uh, with men during menstruation. It's like, really? That's the best that you could come up with? Um, but nowadays you have women that serve as fighter pilots and women are fantastic fighter pilots by all accounts. Um, and And, you know... A lot of times the, the discrimination in these cases is a result of perceptions that men and women are capable of doing different things. Um, and there is physiological differences between a female and a male. And a lot of that's hormone driven. You know, women carry a higher percentage of body fat than men. Um, men are less capable of multitasking than women because of the way that women's brains are wired. Um, and a lot of this goes back to um, primitive paternal instincts. Um, women are more capable of, their bodies are built for nurturing um, babies. Um, so the perception is, well, you're more fragile as a result of that. And I mean, if you look at some of the, of the women that are in, um, uh, ultimate fighting, for instance. I mean, I to say that these women are fragile is a ridiculous statement because some of these women in, in ultimate fighting could easily hold their own against the men in ultimate fighting. Um, and, and, and a lot of things, you know, you see women that are professional athletes now who are far more athletic than some of the men are. So a lot of it has to do with training but most of the discrimination comes from perception from people not understanding yeah like i know there's like this thing where in the past it used to be commentary for men to do this and women to do this like men would go out and play sports while women would like stay inside dress up wear makeup play with dolls and all that stuff and now like we can do a bunch of things like there were, there are some men who think that men are just meant for video games and girls are like to play with dolls. But thing is, I like to play video games, and I'm pretty sure a lot of other girls out there like to play video games too. Yes, you and do. some boys, even some boys like to play with dolls. Yep. Like some boys don't want to go out and just be roughhousing with other boys. They just want to stay inside and just be calm. Like some, like. I definitely think we've definitely come a long way in society um, for um, gender acceptance, even though we still have a ways to go. I can definitely say we've definitely come to a better understanding that 
we can, we are allowed to do what we really please. Like, girls can now play sports. Boys can play with dolls if they choose. But the sad thing is, sometimes they can still be made fun of it for. And I don't see any problem with um, anything that they're doing. Sure, it might seem strange to you, but um, we're all different. And, like, that's basically diversity. And if you're discriminating on people trying to be different or... If people have different ways than you, you're not thinking straight. Absolutely right. I couldn't have said it better myself. Um, so the next type of discrimination that we often see is homophobia. You're familiar with homophobia? I think I've heard the word, but I've never actually. Okay, so homophobia encompasses a range of negative attitudes and feelings toward homosexuality or people who are identified or perceived as being lesbian, gay, bisexual, or transgender. Okay. It's been defined as uh, contempt, prejudice, aversion, hatred, antipathy, and may be based on irrational fear and ignorance and is often related to religious beliefs. Yeah, I can see that because I know, like, um, even though I'm... <laughs> Even though I don't know too much about Christianity, I do know that um, it it used to be about, like, you shouldn't be gay or you shouldn't be lesbian. Right. And, and from a rel religious standpoint, um, a lot of Christian religions, uh, especially Catholic, because I was raised Catholic, see homosexuality as a sin. Although it's never said anywhere in the Bible to be a sin. Yeah. Um, and the, the really the sad irony of the entire Christian, the Catholic Church, is that um, that homosexuality itself has been rampant in the priesthood. And you've seen countless numbers of priests who have preyed on boys in, in, in the church. And you've had numerous legal challenges and allegations thrown around. And instead of facing up to it and bringing these people to justice, really these monsters to justice, the Catholic Church has done everything in their power to cover it up, which makes them even more guilty. Yeah. So they're preaching one thing and practicing something else. Um, but just like it's okay for girls to play sports or video games or boys to play with dolls if they want, it's nobody else's place to tell someone else who they can and can't love. Yeah. Um, so that's another form. Um, another one that's probably less common is ageism. Have you ever heard of ageism? Um, no, but I'm assuming it's uh, discrimination towards age. Correct. So ageism is stereotyping and discrimination against individuals or groups on the basis of their age. This now, may, I um, just want to say this one so just sounds stupid. This one just sounds even the stupidest out of all of them. Well, and we'll give you some examples here. Okay, cool. So this may be casual or systematic. Uh, the term was coined in 1969 to describe discrimination against seniors and pattern on sexism and racism. Ageism is a combination of three connected elements. Among them were prejudicial attitudes towards older people, old age, and the aging process discriminatory practices against older people, and the institutional practices and policies that perpetuate stereotype about elderly people. Um, some of the things that you've seen come out of this are mandatory retirement ages. Um, you have um, family members for, based on the grounds of safety, who are trying to have elderly citizens driver's license taken away from because they don't feel that they're safe to drive. Uh, and you have other people who are forced into retirement because of it. Um, you have people who are fired from their jobs because they can hire someone younger. Yeah. And you actually told us, I think on, um, the father's day podcast that we made, um, that your father actually had that problem with, his, with one of his jobs. Yeah, my father was forced into early retirement when he reached a certain age. Um, and they justified that for my father because my father was a common laborer. <clears throat> so he was a grocer and his job was unloading and loading tractor trailers. 
And the justification, they said, was you're too old to do this. You can't physically do the work anymore. Um, now, had he been facing that in today's society, um, he probably would have been moved to a different type of work, cashier or something like that, that didn't require the physical labor. But the other thing that you run into is getting a job. So a lot of times, if you're over a certain age, it's very difficult to go out and get a job because you're competing with kids that are fresh out of college, much younger people, much, you know, people that are, uh, depending on the type of job that you're trying to get, they might have more modern skills than you. Um, so when someone over the age, say, of 50, and I'm I, statistically I don't have it in front of me right now, but say over the age of 50, you lose your job, depending on the work that you do, it's difficult, very difficult to get a job. So it's discrimination based on age. Um, so there's other types of discrimination. Um, and they show the same type of symptoms. It's either fear of something you don't understand, um, favoritism of one group over another, um, hostility towards one group. Like, for instance, you'll see people who are prejudiced against people who are overweight. Um, I've, I've faced that in my entire life. I've always been a large individual, so I've always faced people who have discriminated against me because of my weight. You have people who discriminate against those who are disabled. Um, you know, if you are disabled as a result of an injury or of um, genetically a genetic defect or whatever it is, people will discriminate against you for that. Yeah, the thing is, I think that's basically the opposite of what's been going on at my school. Like, I have this one um, kid who I actually have a bunch of periods with. His name is Cole, and um, I don't know what happened, but he, I think something happened with his leg that he's in a wheelchair and he's in it for a few weeks. Mm -hmm. And um, he has to get from class to class like that. And there are a bunch of people who will help him out. And, um, like, no one has made fun of him for it. I actually had to move my seat in math so he could um, so he could properly read without having to strain his neck. And I was perfectly okay with it because, I mean, I want to help out. I'm not the kind of person that would discriminate only because he's in a wheelchair. See, and that's nice, and that's exactly how society should work. You know, you should you should treat everyone the way that you want to be treated, yeah. regardless of of age or religion or race or you know physical attributes. Everyone should be treated the same. Yeah, and this kind of goes along with um, the thing I'm doing in ELA. We're trying to find the theme of a story called The Tale of the Mandarin Duck, and the main thing is either don't judge a book by its cover or treat others the way you want to be treated. That's like the two main themes we've come up with. And I think that's a great lesson to learn. I think I'm glad to see the schools are teaching this type of philosophy. Yeah. And I've heard it. And this isn't the first time I've heard it. I've heard it like a bunch of times. Good. So we'll take a little break. The one, the one last one I did want to touch on here is, um, religious discrimination. Um, being of the Jewish faith, you're a minority in your school. I'm sure you could probably count the number of Jewish kids in your school on one or two hands. So a lot of times, uh, religion has been used. I mean, you, you see 9-11, okay? 9-11 was a religious attack. Um, and it's not just Muslims. You know, we have people now in China where the uh, communist government in China is cracking down on um, a Muslim minority group in China. You have people in the Middle East, in Syria now, who are being attacked uh, as a result of religious beliefs. And mm -hmm. you go all the way back to, geez, the Crusades, you know, where Christians were slaughtering Muslims just because they had different belief systems. You go further back than that and the oppression that the, the Jews had under Egypt and Mesopotamia and, and numerous other uh, uh, groups. Um, so religion has probably been the number one cause for death and violence in the history of mankind, which is really unfortunate. Mm -hmm. And going back to an even bigger event that is one of the most known um, 
religious and technically what they considered race racist attacks that we've ever known the holocaust absolutely like that's one of the biggest things that ever happened and that's exactly what we don't want to happen again like i think around like if i'm remembering correctly around 11 million people died during the holocaust six six thousand of them being jews six million six million around of of them being jewish and like you have people like hitler like he not only hated the Jews, um, but he also hated disabled people, gypsies, homosexuals. Like, yeah, that was one. And of Hitler was the epitome of what is classified today as white superiority. Yeah. Um, even even going further than that, it was what he what was termed as Aryan superiority. I know, but like, apparently, his Aryan race was. Blonde hair and blue eyes. But the ironic thing is he had brown hair and brown eyes. Right. Like, if you're going to have an Aryan race, you're not even part of it. Yeah, he was the uh, epitome of a hypocrite when it came to do as I say, not as I do. Um, but, yeah, I mean, Hitler pretty much went after everybody. Mm -hmm. uh, if you didn't meet his ideal standard, then you didn't deserve to live. Yeah. And that's a very dangerous and very um, small-minded approach to things. Yeah, like, I think that is, like, the Holocaust is definitely something we don't want to have happen again, which is why we have to work on it. Like, the Holocaust is a good example of what discrimination can lead to. Like, it can lead to death, war, and, like, just over overall, like, genocide. Absolutely. That's and we got, like, basically, because of the Holocaust, we got a word for discrimination against Jews. We have we have the symbol of the Nazis. Like, even though they're no longer around anymore, they're still remembered. Like, this is definitely one event which should not be forgotten. Well, and that's one of the things, even in today's um, volatile political climate, that people are concerned about because you see the rise of, of neo-Nazism, you see the rise of white supremacy, and you see leaders in our government at this point in time who aren't stopping it. I mean, to the point of even uh, making statements to the effect that they're decent people or good people, um, which it simply preys on that hatred. And the world... The last thing the world needs is more hatred. Yeah. And that's really all that discrimination is based on. Yeah. So we'll come back. We'll talk about some of the negative impacts of discrimination. All righty. So there are emotional and physical impacts to discrimination. Mm -hmm. Um and this is looking at it from the victim's perspective. So the victim may feel anxious, sad, guilt. They may feel empty or depressed. Um, they may not have an interest in doing the tasks that they enjoy. They might have digestive issues um, or physical ailments from, from being discriminated against. Um, and there may be physical injury and violence against individuals. Um, and these are just... Some of the things that happen to victims of discrimination, and some of these things are, are directly inflicted on the individuals, and some of them, like the emotional stress, are indirectly. Like, for instance, you're not subjected to this, but let's say for a moment that there were kids at school who didn't like the fact that you were Jewish. And every day you went to school, you knew there was a chance that they would make fun of you, they'd confront you with it, or they'd harass you with it. How do you think that would make you feel every day? Well, if it was continuous, I would definitely, I would definitely feel as though, like, for a moment, until I got my thoughts together, I would definitely feel like they would just, they just didn't want me 
they I just would feel like they didn't want me to exist. Like, um, in sixth grade, I felt like I was invisible, on, not because of real discrimination, only because I wasn't really that confident. And I think I might have felt that same invis, that same feeling of invisibleness, but I would also feel basically just discrimination towards me, and I'd probably think back to, like, the Holocaust, when the Jews were completely discriminated, and I'd fear if it was going to happen again. Yeah. But then I'd have to remember that I shouldn't let other people make me feel that way, and even though, like, at that point, it's really hard to not think about what people think about you, like... At that point, it just gets really hard. Yeah, and and some of the things that you talked about are are things that kids face every day. I mean, you have racial discrimination is a huge issue that people have today. And it goes a lot of times beyond that mental aspect of things. Take, for instance, the example that I just gave you. But instead of making fun of you, they were physically assaulting you or pushing you or hitting you in the hallway or cornering you in the bathroom and hitting you or stealing your lunch. You know, it, at that point in time, it takes that emotional toll even further because now you're in fear for your own safety. And there's a lot of people that face those situations on, on a daily basis, even to this day. Um, and nobody should have to face that. Yeah, no one should. Like, that can only lead to, like, that can only lead to negative, like, with that, that can only lead to negative thoughts and a closer way to depression and eventually a loss of wanting to live, basically. Like, I'm pretty sure, like, discrimination is, like, one of the main factors that comes into play when kids don't want to live anymore. Yeah, and, and you're right. A lot of times discrimination and the bullying that comes from discrimination leads kids to a certain sense of dread and hopelessness that ultimately can lead to suicide, um, which is why people need to be very mindful of it because it's something that gets out of hand very quickly. And, and a lot of times there is what's called the mob mentality where one person starts and the people that look up to that person want to fit in with that person. So they start doing it themselves. And that just goes into the problem of popularity. We've gone over this a couple of times, and we've discussed that popularity doesn't make any sense whatsoever. Like, sure, the person might look good, and they might be, they might seem cool and have the greatest trends, but that doesn't mean they're a person that's worth looking for. Like, if they're trying to harm someone else, if they don't even have, like, if they're not, if they're not nice, like, that's the problem with popularity that I see. Like, like I see kids obsessing over like the kids who like seem to have everything. They're rich. They have the newest trends. They have lots of friends. Like, but they have no good educational standards. They can't really do anything. And the, and worst of all, they're just. They hate towards others who don't seem to look up to their standards. Right. And no matter how much money you have, it doesn't solve the fact that you're probably, in those circumstances, morally bankrupt. Yeah, that like, you may have real money, but that doesn't mean you actually have good qualities for yourself. Like, I, like some people, not everyone, um... Definitely not everyone, but there are certain people who think they're better than others only because they have more money than others. And, like, I just want to say that's kind of stupid because, like, people who were spoiled as children eventually turn up into those people who end up being mean to others, think that they're better than everyone else, and will eventually end up washing your car and will eventually end up washing the people's car that they were mean to because the... Because they didn't take the time to take care of their educational standards, all they wanted to do was bully, and they just basically didn't do anything useful and thought they would just have everything. Okay. Can't argue with that. Yeah. So the other uh, consequence or, or negative consequence that we see uh, affects a couple of things. So it affects the social uh, 
It has social, educational, and financial impact. So what you said is a great transition. So some of the things that come out of that are a victim may feel confused or broken. Victims may lose trust in other people. In some cases, victims may turn to drugs to escape the abuse. Uh, some victims may start avoiding people and may feel hatred towards other people. So you're becoming that which made you what you are. Yeah. And it may lead to victims losing their jobs or losing interest in their studies. So ultimately what could happen through discrimination and bullying is that the bullies and those discriminating against you change you as an individual and they change you for the worse and you lose interest in the things that you enjoy and you stop studying and going to school and you try to, you avoid the situations that expose you to these people and ultimately it's a negative impact on you. Yeah, and that's like, that sounds similar to like those friends who would peer pressure you to do things that you don't want to do. It sounds sort of similar to that, but it has even more of a negative effect. Like, they're like, they're not peer pressuring you to change. They're, they're like making you feel down and that ultimately makes you change who you are, what you do, and how you feel. And that overall is like one of the worst parts of it. Like they could eventually start discriminating other people because they just can't handle the fact that they're being discriminated. Absolutely. Which will eventually lead into having more people who are who become these bullies and they'll eventually discriminate on other people and it's just a chain line of effects. Right, it's a cycle and at some point in time if society is going to step above this, you know, primitive animalistic instinct to try to dominate others, that cycle has to be broken. Yes. And somebody has to do it. Um, and, and there have been a lot of stand-up people in history who have tried to do that. You know, you see examples like uh, Martin Luther King, um, Mahatma Gandhi. You see people all through history who have decided that, that they're not going to just stand by and, and let it happen. Yeah. Um, and we need more people like that. Our leaders need to be those people. Yeah. Um, so hopefully in the future... That will get better for us. Yeah. So I'd like to get back, uh, come back in a, in a second, and we'll talk about some statistics that are kind of eye-opening statistics on discrimination. Okay. So these numbers come from an NPR, um, National Public Radio, and Robert Wood Johnson Foundation um, study called Discrimination in America – Final summary. And there's a couple different categories here. So the first one we have is uh, the percent of each group that believe discrimination against their group exist in America today. And these are broken down by ethnicity discrimination and gender discrimination. Okay. So when we look at this, we see the number one group that thinks there's discrimination. What do you think that would be? Um... I think either the Asians or the Jews, either or. It was actually African Americans. Oh, yeah. So African Americans came in, 92% of those polled felt there was discrimination. Wow. Um, Latino or Hispanic came in next at 78%, uh, Native Americans at 75 and Asian Americans at 61%. Caucasian Americans, only 55 Wow. So, and I think that is kind of what the societal perception is. The next is uh, gender or sexual orientation. So your choices are male, female, or LGBTQ. Who do you think feels, experiences the most discrimination? Probably the LGBTQ community. 90%. Mm. Women came in at 68 Men at 44. Yeah, I'm not surprised. Me. I don't know what 44% like, of Americans feel like they're why? being discriminated like, against. <laughs> why would men feel discriminated? Like There is, and, and I will, I'm not going to defend anyone in this uh, case here, but there is reverse discrimination at times. 
Um, and I have to give the benefit of doubt to those 44% to think that they may have come from a reverse discrimination. Ah. Um, I probably think the vast majority of those 44% um, aren't actually being discriminated against, nor do they probably even understand what discrimination really is. I mean, I can like, I can definitely understand the LGBTQ community and women, but I can't understand men at all. No. Like, no. how is that even possible? Like, men were basically the main people in society. Like, during the time where there was the segregation, like, men got pretty much everything. They got to do whatever they really wanted, and though technically white women or the non-colored women, they were basically housewives. They weren't allowed to do anything else. Well, even else. the colored women like, were, too. Yeah. I mean, like, women themselves were discriminated against regardless of race. Yeah, like, regardless of their race, women were discriminated back then, but men, like... But even now, you have, you know, the concept of white privilege. When people say that, it usually means white male privilege. You know, the Constitution yeah, like, says, you know, we the people. Yeah. What it really meant was we the white men who are landowners as yeah. white men at and the time. Like, I know one of the laws, um, one of the things it said like we like we all men are equal and for me that's just like complete sexism. Like yeah. in our in our like in the things we're supposed to be abiding by. Like you would just put that out like but we won't dwell on that we'll move on yeah. to the next statistic Sorry. the next statistic is percent of each group to believe they have been unfairly stopped by police so these are specific incidents so again we'll go with ethnicity so you have caucasian american african american latino and hispanic native american or asian americans who do you think feels they've been unfairly stopped the most uh i'm not really sure African-American, oh. 60%. This is a lot of where the Black Lives Matter came from. Okay. Um, what I thought was interesting was the second group that felt that way was Native Americans at 32%, and Latino or Hispanic coming in at 27, Asians at 12, and then Caucasian Americans at 6. Wow. Uh, so those numbers kind of surprised me. Now we'll apply the same question to gender. Who do you think feels they've been stopped most by the police unfairly? Male, female, or LGBTQ? I know it's definitely not male. I can tell that for a fact. No. Wait, it's actually male? It's not, no. Okay, good. Who do you think's number one? Hmm. Huh. It's LGBTQ. Yeah. Now, the interesting thing is here, when you're stopped by a police officer and you're African-American... There's a visual trigger there. If you're LGBTQ, there's not always a trigger. So it might be a perception issue. Um, for men, you know, sometimes men bring it on themselves because of the way they drive or what they drive. Women are 12%. So women don't feel as though they're being oppressed because of that. Well, that's good. That is, shouldn't. that is good. So the next statistic that we have is the percent of each group who have avoided calling the police when in need due to a concern that they'd be discriminated against. So this is a lack of trust in police here. Ethnicity, who do you think is number one? African Americans. African Americans. This is what society has done at this point in time. Yeah. So society has discriminated against African Americans to the point that they don't trust the police enough to call when they're in need of help. That's a real crime yeah. on society. Um, Native Americans at 22, Latinos at 17, Asians at 8, and Caucasians at 2. Uh. Same thing for gender. Now, gender, they split it up. So you have male, female, LGBT. Caucasian and LGBTQ of color or of minority. Who do you think was the number one group there who doesn't trust the police? LGBTQ of color. Yeah, 30%. 30% and then female at nine, males at eight, 
and then LGBTQ Caucasians at five. Wow, I didn't expect that. I didn't either. So that's some very interesting. And, and, and what you're seeing with those numbers is what society is doing to us as individuals. And it's eroding that trust that people have in the authority that's there to, to protect them. So we'll come back and we'll talk about real quick some of the effective ways to overcome discrimination. All righty. So celebrate our diversity. Being different is what makes us unique and uh, (laughs) special. It doesn't help us speak, apparently. Nope. Embracing all of the differences that everyone has as a whole makes us more than we can achieve as individuals. Number one lesson to be learned from this podcast. Embrace your beauty and strength. So it's embrace everybody who's different, but you have to love yourself too. Yeah. If you don't love yourself, you can't love and accept other people. Yeah, I can definitely see that. Because, like, if you don't really love yourself, you can't really show that compassion towards others. Because the first step is to really love yourself. Because if you don't love yourself, then you'll end up just feel... You'll end up just not really caring about others. Like, if you don't... Like, I know there are some people who say they love themselves, but also try to bully other people but there are people who do it peacefully like there's a way of doing it peacefully and a way of doing it non-peacefully like if you just love yourself because you think you're perfect and everything then you're gonna lead into the bullying state and the eventual um discrimination state well if you think of it like um, think about your positives and negatives. Like, think about the things you're good at. Think about think about the things you're bad at. Think about ways you can fix them, and think about just like ha- what makes you good as a person. It'll help you find the good va- It'll help you with finding good values in others. That's very good, and that leads into the next couple of points that we have here. Is take good care of yourself and learn to cope. One of the best ways you can fight discrimination is by taking good care of yourself. Your survival is not just important, it's an act of revolution against those who would discriminate against you. Stand up for yourself. Let others know how their words and actions have affected you and those you care about. Fight for your rights. In order to affect change, people need to be made aware that the problem exists. Yeah, so... I can see two different ways if you were to stand up um, for yourself. And one way it would go in the positive way, and one it would go the negative. For the positive, um, when you would try to say it, when you would, if you said it peacefully both times. So when you say it peacefully in the positive aspect, it could potentially stop them or lessen, um, or lessen progressively. Whereas the bad effect, the people wouldn't care. Like, at that point, you've definitely proven you are not a good member of society. Like, if you don't take the time to listen to people or know that you've been causing people trouble and you've decided not to do anything about it or maybe even worsen the problem, that just makes you a pretty bad member of society anyway. And that brings us to the next point is strategize and know the consequences before you act. There truly is a time for daring and a time for caution, and an intelligent person knows the difference. Weigh the costs and benefits and decide for yourself what you're able and willing to do. Take stock of yourself, capitalize on your strengths, and put a plan in motion to compensate for your weaknesses. Yeah. Know your limitations. Yeah, so I just wanted to quickly throw out an example of that. Um, Like we've talked in the peer pressure um, podcast, um, people telling you to use drugs. Well, you use the two different perspectives. Drugs are dangerous, and would you do it? Like, you have to put all that in your mind. The people who don't do that are the ones that eventually get addicted to it. The people who do are the people that say no and finally get rid of the fake friends. Very good. And the last point that they have is reach out and organize. Don't go it alone. People really are stronger and safer when they stand together. Mobilize your friends, family, and coworkers. We're stronger when we stand together, share our stories, and make our voices heard. Uniting with others who face a similar situation as you do 
can help you obtain the resources and social support you need to survive. They can even give you a base to mobilize should you decide to organize and fight for your rights. So a lot of it is know who you are, fortify yourself, and don't be afraid to stick up for others. Yeah, like I can definitely see that. Like, know, know your strengths and weaknesses is definitely a good part of knowing yourself. But also be thankful for your strengths. And even though you may have weaknesses, don't let them drag you down. If you think too much about your weaknesses or you just... Or people find and f- people find out about it. They can find your weaknesses and use it against you. And that, and and if you don't overcome your weaknesses or don't think about them, if or think about them too much, that's just leading you harder into it. And if you stick up for other people, it shows the fact that you care about other people. And if you don't let other people bother you, it'll show that you won't let other people. Um, drag you down. And I just wanted to bring it full circle with what we had talked about at the beginning of the podcast about my gaming group. Um, <coughs> and that is celebrate our diversity. Our diversity is what makes us stronger. It doesn't make us weaker. It doesn't tear society apart. What does that is the hatred of discrimination. Yeah. We are all better when I know about you and your society and your culture <clears throat> and when i know more about everybody's culture everyone's culture and ethnic background and religion has something constructive to lend to society yeah and we can only experience that when we embrace that diversity and i just wanted to go on one thing i remember we had this one when i was in my elementary school we had this one um assembly where it was this man who um was born without uh with only two fingers on one hand and like he talked about how people would judge him for how he looked and that's like also a problem like first impressions like when you see someone who looks different you immediately freak out and some people resort to bullying or just acting like they're freaks but after we got to know the the man who was doing it, he was a really funny guy. Like, that definitely taught us, like, don't judge people with first impression. Get to know them, and you'll see that they're actually a pretty good person. Don't judge what's on the outside. Judge what's on the inside. Right. And, and don't be afraid of something that you don't understand. Yeah, like... Ignorance should not govern your actions. If you don't understand something, educate yourself. Yeah, and I just wanted to quickly say, like, how judging someone based on their appearance can affect them, and then I'll go into an example afterwards. So, someone could look beautiful and just overall nice-looking, but they could be, like, completely bitter and terrible on the inside, whereas someone could look completely different and not appealing to look at, But they could also be a really sweet kind of person, and they'll be super funny as well. As long as they stop hitting the microphone, they should be funny. Okay, and I just wanted to do this one example that happened to me on my third day of school when we had our substitute teacher for science. He was trying to guess whose name belonged to who. And when it came to, and like, he got every single one wrong. And it was basically a lesson on why you shouldn't, guess people based on their appearance like he went to i remember he went to me and he um he thought that the name madison was basically like the sweet kind of smart girl and that's kind of me somewhat okay (laughs) and like there was another madison and he said um she looked like a madison but when he turned to me, he said, I didn't look like a Madison because I think I was actually wearing this exact hoodie as well. So I basically had my dyed hair, wore a hoodie, and didn't exactly look like the sweet kind of Madison. Yet, I'm basically... The uh, sweet kind of Madison. Yeah. Yeah. Like, that's why you shouldn't judge people based on their appearance. I am the sweet kind of Madison, but I don't like to wear, like, fancy clothes. I prefer... My ideal outfit is a hoodie and jeans or shorts with like sneakers. like to be comfortable. Yeah, and the reason I dye my hair is only because I think it looks cool. Okay. 
It's your self-expression, and there's nothing wrong with that. Yeah, and, like, I, I can tell there are some people who, like, there are some people who discriminate people on why they should look a certain way. Um, like, um, like, if you think, like, someone who, it, if, I think I've seen this sometimes, like, some people might think this, like, those kind of, um, depressed people, they would wear all black, have black hair, and just be antisocial, but, like, that's not all depressed people, like, Chris, who I mentioned earl, who I, the kid I mentioned earlier, um, he, um, is sort of depressed, but he doesn't wear all black. He doesn't have black hair. He's just, he's not always. So you're talking about stereotypes in this case. Like, there are stereotypes, yes. Yeah, yeah, and, and don't stereotype people. Get to exactly. know them. Like, that's what I'm basically trying to put out there right. in this way. Don't stereotype. Right, that's always bad. So, I think that's all that I had today. Uh, we'll come back if the quick intermission and uh, have you finish up with your final thoughts if you have any left because you've given us a lot yeah and uh, any shout outs that you might have awesome to you for final thoughts and shout outs okay so I've put things in perspective with different things so I'm going to put this perspective of people who have been discriminated and the people who do discriminate so I'll go with the people who dis who are discriminated first. So, if you are being discriminated for whatever reason, your sex, your race, your religion, or any other way, even your age, just know that you shouldn't let the people get to you. Yes, it will be hard to do that. I've definitely tried to learn to not let other people get to me, and I definitely have to say it is hard. But the main thing I normally like to do is you just ignore them. Like... If the people are annoying you with just words, just ignore them. But if they are physically trying to hurt you because of who you are, you should definitely go and seek help from someone who will offer it to you. That's definitely a turning point. Like, if they start with this physical violence, then you should definitely seek help. But if it's just verbal abuse, you should definitely make sure to tell an adult. But you can also just use it yourself. It's not as dangerous as... I mean, it's still dangerous, but it's not as dangerous as physical violence. And to those people who do discriminate, just know that... You we should, know where you live. Oh my god, no, no, you literally scared me. Do not do that. No, no, no. Uh, I'm not putting that message out, no. <sighs> This guy. Anywho, so for those people who do discriminate people, I said people too many times, That's didn't okay. I? Okay. Um, you don't get a commission. For, for those who do discriminate others, um, just know you've got the wrong idea. Um, as I mentioned earlier with some of the type of people, you don't want to be the person who stereotypes or discriminates people. If you even do any type of physical violence to others, that's a crime in itself. But, like, if you are physically, if you are verbally abusing someone, that's also a crime and you shouldn't be doing that. You have to put, you basically have to put your, sh it's basically, um, putting your feet in my shoes. It, Whatever the saying is, I don't remember. That's close what it enough. Is. Yeah. <laughs> sure, it's like put your perspective in others' perspective. Like, what if you were the person being discriminated for your race, gender, etc.? How would you feel, and what would you do about it? Which is why you definitely should not discriminate, because as we mentioned earlier, it can have very negative effects on other people. And yes, I know some of the people who do discriminate don't really care about that. But you just have to know what if it happens to you. And I think that's the main idea. Basically, don't stereotype, don't discriminate, and hopefully we'll eventually in society will become a non-discriminatory or stereotypic society. Yeah, hopefully we'll evolve to that point sooner rather than later. Yeah, that would be good. So shout out. Who are you shouting out to today? I'll give a shout out to my friend Chris. Chris is in my science class and I know he he is in my lunch period. He um 
He is trans, and he has, and as I mentioned earlier, he has been going through discrimination, and I really feel bad for him. Like, he's being discriminated because, one, um, he's depressed, two, he's trans, and three, technically he's lesbian. Uh, it's hard to say that. Okay. Um, but... And, like, I've gotten to know him a bit, and he is a talented um, artist, and he's definitely funny. And, which is why you definitely shouldn't stereotype on people. Like, that's just a crime in itself. Right. All right. I think that just about does it for this week. Awesome. Um, check out the podcast. It will be up, available online on YouTube, on Monday morning at 8 a.m. at www.youtube.com slash insights into things. You can check out the audio version available at the same time on podcast.insightsintoteens.com or you can hit us up on Facebook at facebook.com slash insights into things podcast. And don't forget to check out our other podcasts. Which are? Which are Insights into Entertainment and our newest one, Insights into Tomorrow. That's correct. You can also email us at comments at insightsintothings.com. Uh, we'll be back next week with another great podcast. Awesome. Thanks a lot, everyone. Bye, everyone. <laughs>